Good morning. This morning, we will together study the theme of total commitment in Luke chapter 9, verse 57 to 62. Let's look at the Word of God. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my house. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand on the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Let us look at the, uh, come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the one who is worthy of us to follow and to be your disciple that we offer all our life and everything that we have to you, that we will always be with you intimately every moment of every day, that we will follow your example and follow your teaching, that we will proclaim your salvation to the ends of the earth, that we will proclaim your glory throughout the whole world so that we will live for you and, if needed, to die for you. May your spirit be with us at this time to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will speak to our hearts. Please help us at this time so that my words and our meditations together will be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the source and end of life. He is the great Almighty God, the one that existed, King of kings, Lord of lords. He is the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He was anointed, and He is the righteous of God. He is God amongst us. He is Emmanuel. He is the Good Shepherd. He is the Great Shepherd. He is the healer. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Son of God, full of grace and peace. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the power of God. He is the Word of God in the flesh. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the authority of over all, and He is the King over all. He is all those things and much more. But we have we have humbled him, um, sm made him small into our lives, and to receive him into our life. Well, he needs us to receive him. He does not need our reception, but we need to be accepted by him. He does not need us, but we need him. We exist and live because He gives us life. If He takes away our breath, then we become um, no breath. If He takes us our life away, we no longer exist. We have degraded His uprightness in our church, in our lives. We have lost the meaning of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. And the Word of God motivates us to rejoice and enjoy the life that we have for Him, to live for Him every day, walking close to Him, being close to Him, intimate with Him through His Word and prayer. But many times we have not done those things. And ladies and gentlemen, the passage that we have just read, it seems like people do not want him, people, um, God did not want people to follow him. It appears as if it is contrary to what we are doing today. We do everything we can, allow opportunities for people to come to God and accept all who come to God. But Jesus Christ was different. Whenever there was 
a multitude of people who gathered around him. Jesus spoke words as in John chapter 6, You must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And the disciples imagined them saying, Lord, how can you say such things? If you want a lot of people to follow you, say something that people will uh, listen easier. And how can you say to eat my flesh and drink my blood? How can many people follow you? But, and in Luke, Jesus said to the multitude, Whoever wants to follow me must hate their father, mother, and brother and sister. Whoever wants to follow me must carry their cross of the crucified person to follow me. Whoever wants to follow me must leave everything behind and follow me. And Jesus said to one man, Sell all your possessions and give to the poor and then follow me. How will we respond? If you just came to Jesus and say, ask Jesus, Jesus, I want to follow you. And Jesus said, if you do not hate your mother, father, and brother and sister, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. If you do not leave everything, your checkbook, your possessions, then you're not worthy of me. And Jesus can also say to you and me, and he has said it to us, he may could say to you, sell all that you have, give to the poor, and follow me. God has the authority. He is worthy of it. Jesus Christ said these things to us. He calls us to love him, loving him to the point where the love that we have for our brothers, sisters, and mother and father is no comparison. Jesus wants us to die to ourselves. He calls us to give all that we have to Him, our whole life, everything that we have. Our authority is under, uh, is of Christ, and He calls us to follow Him totally committed. And He has the power and authority over our life. But many times, we read these passages, and we explain as, oh, Jesus didn't really mean it that way. He wants us to have a, a balanced life. He, want, he doesn't want us to have uh, like a fanatic life. Uh, no, he, it's okay. We can follow Jesus and live, uh, you know, that's reasonable. Why do we have to give it all to Christ? This is the passage. This is the place where it's so, in, so harmful because we create a Jesus that is not a Jesus in the Bible. A Jesus that lives like us, thinks like us, speaks like us. A Jesus that accepts anything. A Jesus who doesn't see that possession of the material things of this life is wrong. A Jesus that wants a balanced life, wants to avoid extreme extremes and avoid all harms. But when we treat Jesus as that, we have created a Jesus that is not the Jesus of the Bible. And we come to praise and sing songs to Jesus Christ. But actually, we just sing to praise ourselves. How is the Jesus of the Bible? Is this the Jesus that you worship? Is this the one that you offer your whole life to follow him? Let us examine his worthiness through three aspects. First of all, he is worthy of our trust, of all our trust. He is worthy that we place our trust, all of our trust, in Him. Someone came to Jesus, the Bible says in verse 57, as they were going along the road, someone said to Him, I will follow you wherever you go. Wherever you go, I will follow. So if you pay attention to the, the first five uh, verses in this passage. Where was Jesus going? Jesus was going to Jerusalem. For what? To die. And this person probably did not know. So now that they, this person saw a multitude following Jesus, 
he probably wanted to follow and go forward. And Matthew records that this man was a scholar and wants to follow Jesus because everybody praised Jesus. And maybe Jesus called him aside and say, "Put aside all these people. Take away all these." Leaves on the road and the robes, and look at the cross. Are you sure that where I go, you will follow? And Jesus said to him, "Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. From here to Jerusalem, there is no hotel." Jesus was committed. To accomplish what He has done for us on the cross, the Bible says that Jesus faced His jaw. He 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 aimed His jaw toward Jerusalem. That means that He was headed toward Jerusalem to die for us. The Roman so- soldiers did not nail Jesus Christ to the cross, but Jesus volunteered or committed His life. To Jerusalem to die, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus sweat as if blood coming out from his body. Why is that? Is it because he is afraid of being crucified on the cross? From the time that Jesus died and resurrected and ascended to heaven and to the church, many people has died because of Christ. There was one person in India because he believed in Jesus Christ. They took him out and peeled his skin, and as they peeled his skin off, he sang songs to the Lord. And he said, "Take away this old flesh of mine, so that I put on the righteous new robe of Christ." And another man, Christopher Robb, he went to be isolated in a place, and he sent away a letter, a letter note to his wife. And he wrote in it, "Today they will dismantle me from the neck down, but they cannot dismantle my soul." And the, as he went up on that hill, he praised the Lord, and people were going to behead him. Is Jesus less than those people? Yet, is he is he afraid of the cross that he would sweat to the point of bleeding? No, we need to understand the price that Jesus had to pay so that we can be redeemed. Jesus had to take on the punishment, the condemnation of God the Father. In the Garden of Gethsemane, He said, "Father, take this cup from me. This cup. What is this cup? This cup is spoken of in Jeremiah. It's spoken of in Psalms. It's spoken of in Isaiah. In Jeremiah twenty-five, Isaiah seventy-five." Uh, Psalm seventy-five in Isaiah. It says about the the cup of suffering, of the condemnation of God the Father. And when Jesus thought about that cup, he was he was afraid of that cup because of all the sins, the wickedness, the evil of all mankind is upon him. And not only that, but more so, the condemnation. Of God the Father upon him. Imagine you go to a lake, and the lake is so dark and and black and stink. And now you wear a very clean, white, uh, beautiful outfit, and you go to that lake, and for some reason, you are willing to jump into that black, muddy, dirty. Stinky lake. If you just think about that, it's gross, right? And now Jesus Christ, of all the sins of you and mine and all mankind, He had to bear all those sins and the condemnation of God upon Him. It is very、uh, terrible. Yet Jesus went to the cross and He drank the whole cup. And placed the cup upside down and said, "It is finished. It is completed. All because of you and me." And we need to understand that when we follow Christ, 
We need to walk in the light that He has done for us. This person came to Jesus and said, Lord, I want to follow you. Wherever you go, I will go. Sounds romantic, right? Wherever you go, honey, I will go with you. No, wherever you go, Lord, I will go. This person did not know what he was saying. This person wanted to follow Christ to use him for his own benefits. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. When you follow me, you will have me. You have me, you have everything. But I am not a mean for you to meet your needs and ends. I am your end. I'm not just the means to your end. I am your end. We come to Christ to have Christ. We come to Him to have Him. He is the one we want, that we desire, that we need. For in Him we have everything that we need. And we have everything that we want. But we don't want to live like that in following Christ. We just want Jesus to be a genie in a bottle. When we need, we just tap on the bottle and the genie jumps out. What do you need, Master? I will serve you. I need you to heal me. I need money. I need a job. I need to ace this test. I need this. I need that. I need this. Lord, you do it for me. As if Jesus was a genie to serve us rather than us serving him. We make our lives be filled with things of this world. We make this church to be filled with the enjoyment of this world. We want to come to church to be entertained, to be to enjoy, to to get what we can get, not to worship God. Why is it so difficult for us to enjoy Jesus Christ? It should be easy. It should be easy that we enjoy ourselves, we enjoy Christ. What will happen to the church of God when everyone in the church says, Jesus is all that I need? Only Jesus Christ is all I need. If that is the case, then we will escape from the, de from the desires of this world. We will not want anything else better, faster, And in the end, the result is that we will give all to God so that we can care for His, His, knee, uh, His, uh, His uh, desire in us. We will live for His glory. We will have time for Him. We will have time to worship Him. We will have time to study His Word. We will have time to fellowship with Him in prayer. We will have time to care for our brothers and sisters. We will have time because Jesus is worthy of all those things. I will follow you, Lord, wherever you go. We will say those things if we are willing to pay the price to follow Him. Lord, use us so that we will uh, have a generation that will say, Jesus is all I need. Whoever follows this world to have Jesus is all I need. I am satisfied. May He be worthy of all our trust. And not only to trust in Him with all our heart, but with all our plan and dreams we lift up to Him. The second person came to Jesus and, I'm sorry, Jesus said to him, follow me. But that person said, Lord, let me go and bury my loved one. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. The scholars of the Bible um, could debate over this, uh, oh, is the father of this uh, man dead or not dead? And maybe in a few days the man will die, and so let him go home to be with his father and then bury him. And some people think that way. But That is something that needs to be done, right? You need to bury your father because then it would be a shame to your dad, right? Other people think that these, this uh, father has died and this one just want to go home and bury him. But if this man has, uh, his father has died, he, he should have to stay home with his, 
uh, to bury his dad, right? Not to go out and meet Jesus. Imagine that if that father had just died and now Jesus said, don't go to the funeral. Then Jesus is, is too uh, audace or brass or and not caring. But let us listen so that we don't misunderstand this point. When you follow Jesus, you have the responsibility to plan and dream beyond all the plans and dreams and desires of this world. Jesus is everything. And Jesus said, Go and proclaim the kingdom of God. This is something that is needed. It is the responsibility of each Christian, of each father of Christ, to proclaim the kingdom of God. Everything God gave to us is for one purpose, that is, to proclaim the gospel, to make disciples of all men. God has given you degrees and houses and cars and uh, jobs and everything. It is all for Christ, all for His glory. Jesus said, Go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Friends, whatever career you are in, whether it's business, pharmacy, or whatever it is, it is not for you to succeed and make a lot of money and enjoy this life to buy a big house and a fancy car. No. It is all to proclaim the kingdom of God and to proclaim His glory to the ends of the earth. Use all that you have, the talents that you have given that are given to you for Christ. Everything that occurs in this church, if everyone in this church, the greatest dream, the greatest plans, the greatest desires that you have is to proclaim the gospel and kingdom of God and His glory to all. What will happen if that is so deep into our hearts then the gates of hell cannot hinder or keep the kingdom of God from being spread out in this earth, in this uh, land. All your plans, all your desires, all your dreams offer it all to Him. What are your plans for your life, for your family? That f plan must come from God and submissive to His goal. Jesus is worthy, right? He is worthy of all the best that we have to give to Him. And He is worthy of all our affection. Our affection must be lifted to Christ. Someone came to Jesus and said, Lord, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my house. And Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Don't look back. There are so many people who look back and had to pay a great price. Lot's wife turned back. Don't turn back. A word that is so bold. When we follow Christ, we must be so won over by a great command. We are um, taken by a great love. We follow Christ because He has take, He has conquered our, our love. We love Him above all. The question po posed here is, above all things, does Jesus have all your affection? Is Jesus truly the center of your love? More than your family, more than your friends, more than anyone or anything. The deciding point here is that everything in the New Testament, whether it is a sacrifice to leave everything to carry the cross and follow Christ, 
all those seem so difficult for us. One of the reasons that the followers of Jesus Christ cannot give and offer their life to be a missionary to other countries is because of the limitations of their parents or because of the conveniences of this life in America. When you think about having to leave some people that you love or, peop or things that are so convenient, oh, at that place there's no hair dryer, there's no shower, and when you think about that, you just don't dare go to serve God. But everything will change when Jesus is the number one love in your life. In Matthew, Jesus sh shared a story, told a story about a person who worked and and he was plowing, and he discovered a treasure. He went back to the city. He sold all that he had. In his heart, he was rejoicing, though he was had to leave it all, all that he had. Maybe some people will see him and say, are you crazy today? your house, everything you have, and you're selling it all? How are you going to live? How are you going to eat? But that person knew. That person knew that when he forsook everything, he will have a greater treasure that he, than what he has. We see and find in Jesus Christ that he is the utmost high, worthy of everything that we have to leave it all behind to offer our lives to Him. He is our King of kings, and we are willing to follow Him because He is everything. In the process of becoming a disciple of Christ, I have shared with you a person who does not know Christ, then they, they become a, a young child in Christ, and then they follow Christ. But there are still some people who are Christians who are just like little babes because they do not want to spend time to study the Word of God. They don't want to spend time to fellowship with Christ and to fellowship with brothers and sisters. They don't have time to go to church to worship, so they are still little babes. And the Apostle Paul say, you should be teachers, you should be disciple makers, and yet you are still little babes. And ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus Christ is worthy and worthy of your worship, then you will be willing to, to pay the price to grow in Christ, right? There is no excuse. No excuse. There, is three, there are three answers to Jesus Christ, either yes sir, no sir, or no excuse, sir. It's not because I'm too busy, I'm too tired, I have no time. No. Is Jesus worthy? Is He? If so, then we must be willing to pay the price to be His disciple. If you're not, if it's, He's not worthy, then we cannot be a disciple of Christ. I'm not talking about salvation here. I'm talking about what value does Jesus have in your life? Let us come to the word, Lord in prayer. Everyone who sees the true value of Jesus Christ will offer their whole life to Christ. This is the reason why we come to be His disciple. We offer all that He wants us to offer up to Him. Jesus is worthy, right? We live close to His Word because He is worthy of the best that we can give to Him. We fellowship with Him because we, He is worthy of our love and devotion. We proclaim about Jesus Christ because He is worthy of all glory lifted up by all people on this earth. Only He alone is worthy of our love devotion and worship. No one else worthy, only Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you are worthy. 
of the best that we can offer to you. We know that you love us and we're willing, we're willing to bear our sins, to drink the cup of condemnation for us. And you are the utmost high, worthy of our devotion and commitment to live for you, to proclaim your glory to all nations, all men. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.